class, welcome to our foot lesson today. Before we begin, I want you to have everyone have their note-taking guide out to follow along with the video. If you don't have this copy already, you can create one on your own at home on regular paper. I want you to include your objective, vocabulary, notes from the lesson, and then you're going to have a, a part to put your homework in and a part to put questions in to ask when we go to class. Okay, so our lesson for today, we need to start with our content objective. What are we going to be learning today? We're going to be using whole numbers and we will represent data on a stem and leaf plot. This is going to be branching off of things we've already learned. We've already learned how to use whole numbers and fractions on a frequency table and we've used them on our line plots. So this is going to be something new. We're going to be doing a stem and leaf plot. It's another way to represent data. So what is a stem and leaf plot? A stem and leaf plot is an illustration of data on a plot that uses part of the data values as a stem and part of the data values as the leaf. So I've even got down five steps that we can use to follow along with as we are trying to work out our problems. So I'm going to go ahead and read them to you and I'll point them out and you can pause and come back to these steps anytime you need. Our step one will be making a list in order from making a list in order from least to greatest. Step two, find the stems. The stems are the digits in your tens value plates. Step three, put the stems in a column. Write the stem on the left side of your vertical column. Step four. Next, you're going to find your leaves. And you're going to put those in order from least to greatest. Your leaves can represent many times. Anytime they are shown and you have a value, you will represent that value every time. In your stem, the value only is represented one time. I will go into a little more detail of this when we actually start working into a problem. And our final step is step five. And you're going to title your graph. So let's keep those things in mind as we're working through our problem. So an example of what this problem would look like in your homework or in a textbook is right here. The number of Girl Scout cookie boxes sold by each member of the local group were, and then here's our data set. Our data set is right here. I already went ahead and wrote it down for us. So it's starting from, like I said, from least to greatest. So our smallest number is a 6, and it goes all the way to 50. So what we want to do is, we already have it color coded, I've got colors red and blue. Our blue today is going to represent our stem, and our red will represent our leaf. Okay, so when I come to a value that only is in the ones place, we need to remember that we still have to have a tens value here, but our tens value is going to be a zero. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write that over here under our stem column. Then I'm going to circle every other value that we have in our tens place. And I want you to note, look at how our 1's are repeating and we have our 3's repeating. When we come to our column, we're only going to show that one time. So I will write our 1, then I know I have a 2, and I have a 3 in our 10's value, and so on until I get all the way to the end where we have our 50. And another way you can do this, also in your homework if this helps you, we can go ahead and label what value goes under which column. So for our stem, like I said, you're going to have your tens value. And then in our leaf, you're going to have your ones value. Okay? Now let's move on to our leaves. Okay, let's circle all of those. Okay, now when we have our leaf, we can't just put it anywhere we want on here. They don't match up by what number they go on. So like right here, and I have the zero, the zero is not going to go next to my zero right here. Or the zero in the five. That's what I meant. The zero in the five over here, which is in the ones place, doesn't match up with our zero in the tens place. The way you want to do it is you want to match up with the corresponding number it goes with, with appropriate value. So right here, I have a six, and that corresponds with my 0 in the tens place. Right here I have the number 12. That corresponds with my 1 and makes the number 12. And like right here I have the number 16. So since I already have the 1 in the tens place, it's repeating. I don't have that repeating right here, but I still need to represent this value in the ones place over here next to my leaf. And look how I went. I went from 2 to 6. I wouldn't put 6 here and 2 here. I'd have to least list them from least to greatest. Now let's move on to go to our, there we have the number 21, so here's the number 21. 
and 39, and 50. Even though there is a zero listed in our ones place, we still have to list it on here to show that there is that value there. Okay, so after we've listed all our values on our plot, we're going to go ahead and do number step five, and that's title your graph. So we go back to our problem for that, and it says the number of Girl Scout cookie boxes sold by each member of the local group. So for our title, I'm going to put number of cookie boxes sold Okay, <laughs> there we go. Okay, so now that we've gone ahead and we've worked out a problem on here, I want you to do your own homework, and you're going to do this and bring it to class for us to go over. You're going to read the problem and use our stem and leaf plot that we have right here to answer your questions. And then at the end of it, you get to create your own scenario, and you can plot the data on a stem and leaf plot. 